thanks so much for being here. I realize it's late on a Sunday, and so uh, it's awesome that, that you're here. Um, my name is Tom Shapiro. I'm the founder and CEO of Strategy, which is a branding, design, and marketing agency, SEO being one of our core uh, marketing services. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, power SEO for WordPress. So in other words, this is not SEO 101. We're not going to be talking so much about uh, the blocking and tackling of SEO. Uh, that's been done a million times. There are a million resources online for that. So we might cover that for a few minutes, but really what I want to share with you is a lot of highly advanced SEO strategies that can really move the needle for you and your business. Now, looking at the potential and the impact on your business, there are over 100 billion searches on Google every single month. That's a, that's a massive market, it's a massive opportunity. So if you're here for your own business, it's a massive opportunity. If you develop sites for, uh, for clients, it's a massive opportunity for your business um, to be driving more value for your clients. Uh, and so we're going to be talking about how you can capitalize on this and, and, uh, and uh, capture more uh, SEO traffic, more SEO conversions, more SEO results overall. However, what I want to get across pretty clearly is that there are no quick fixes, there are no quick tactics. Uh, SEO is hard work. It's a lot of work and it's, and it's a lot of hard work. Uh, and you have to be very, very intelligent about it. Uh, and there is a ton of data that you'll be dealing with with SEO. Um, and the data analysis is critical to your success. But in addition to that, and this is, this is a necessary component, SEO requires creativity. And this isn't really talked about that much. But what is really going to separate you or your clients uh, from everyone else out there who you're competing against is the creativity that you bring to it. And so you, you have data that you're looking at and analyzing. You have creativity that, that you're developing. But do you have the right strategy? Right? You have to bring the data and the creativity together to make sure that the way you're spending your time, the way that you're, you're trying to provide value to your client or to your own website is through marketing strategy. So you can spend all your time optimizing title tags, optimizing URLs, making sure your meta descriptions are compelling enough to click through from the SERPs. Okay, but what if, what if the marketing strategy is wrong? What if the marketing communications fall flat? Then all you'd be doing is driving more and more traffic to a bad customer experience. To an experience that doesn't drive sales, doesn't drive conversions. And so you'd be driving more and more traffic to a bad experience. In other words, you'd be doing more damage than good to your, uh, to your brand or to your client's brands. And that's absolutely critical to understand. And it's hardly ever talked about. When people talk about SEO and they talk about SEO strategies, what do they talk about? They typically talk about the nuts and bolts, right? They talk about the blocking and tackling. How do you optimize, right? How do you optimize? But it's actually more important to make sure that your marketing strategy is highly effective and is going to convert and that, that your prospective clients are going to love you when they have brand touches. And then when you optimize the hell out of that, that's when your business takes off. So what does this look like in reality? So years ago, Barilla Pasta, the, the Italian pasta manufacturer, uh, came to us, I was, I was at a prior agency, and they said, well, could you talk to us about SEO for our website? So I looked at their website, I looked at their analytics, and what I found was, everyone who came to their website immediately left. They hated it. It was a horrible experience. So. You, you couldn't get more than one page view per visit. Uh, they invested a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources in video marketing. But their videos were boring. They sucked. They were horrible. So we had to tell them this. We said, well, look, they're asking us to talk to you about how to optimize your website. That's, that's not the issue here. If you want to drive results, you need to fix your website. You need to fix your marketing strategy. Then we can optimize the hell out of it, and then you're going to drive business results. And if we just optimize the hell out of your website right now, it will be horrible for your business. Yes, it will look good, we'll drive lots of traffic, but it will be horrible for your business. And so 
what we, what we saw was a great opportunity. They're an Italian brand, right? So they had the authentic, uh, the authenticity that was needed to come at the pasta market from, say, a, an Italian grandma's perspective, right? To own the dining room table, to bring the family back to the table. And you can imagine the Italian grandma making a big, big uh, pot of uh, pasta and bringing the family together. And we, we, we told them our vision for this, and we said, look, what's a major problem in the United States today? Fragmentation of the family. And no one, no one eats dinner together anymore. No one has the time. So you have the right, being from Italy, to say, hey, let's come back to the dining room table together. And you can own that in the market. And that can be a very unique voice and a very unique experience that you bring to your audience. And your audience is people who are interested in pasta. So there's direct alignment there. And so uh, they, they settled on a share the table campaign, brought their PR agency in, brought us in on SEO, redid the website, redid all the videos. And so everything, everything about their marketing strategy was now about share the table. And it produced phenomenal results. And that's that's what I mean by advanced SEO strategies. It's not about how to just optimize a title tag, how to put keywords on the page, how to get some external links. You need to make sure that your marketing strategy is dead on. And then you'll knock it out of the park. So let me take a step back and give you a little bit more information about my background. So uh, I've been in uh, SEO for about 11 years now. Um, through the years, I've worked with a lot of different companies, whether startups, a lot of mid-tier uh, companies, as well as Fortune 500 companies, as you can see here. Everyone from Procter & Gamble, the largest advertiser in the world, worked with about 10 brands there. Uh, to Hewlett Packard, at the time, they had five divisions, worked with all five divisions for their SEO, AT&T, Lens End, Kraft Foods, on and on. And so, in other words, I've seen it all. I've seen very, very complex SEO implementations on the most complex websites. And time and time again, it all comes back to, do you have the right marketing strategy? All right, let's take a step back and let's just review how Google has evolved through the years. Because I think it's really, it's really important that you understand this and how Google evolves continually and then how your strategies need to uh, not only keep up with Google, but, but actually stay ahead, and how to stay ahead. So, um, does anyone know what background is? Anyone? So, this was Google, before it was Google. Uh, so, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were working at Stanford on a, uh, what they thought was a, uh, a search engine, and it was called Backrub, and then in 1997, they decided, hey, let's change the name. Let's call it Google. So they registered Google.com in 97. It wasn't even a business yet. It wasn't until 98 that they actually uh, incorporated it as a business. And so what did Google look like in 1998? Google in 1998. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what does it look like today? Not much different, surprisingly. Right? So 1998, today. However, okay, the facade is that it's all the same. However, on the back end, it's entirely different. If you, you could have optimized sites in 1998 in a certain way, just focusing on blocking and tackling, and been mega successful. Why? Because 99% of sites back then were not optimized for the search engines. Even 10 years ago, most sites were not optimized for the search engines. Most people didn't understand the, the, the principles of blocking and tackling for SEO. And so that was the strategy back then. And it worked. It really worked. You cannot do that today. And so the Google of today is very different. Now, through the years, there have been a lot of evolutions. In 2010, there was caffeine. And what caffeine did, and this was an, uh, an initiative by, by Google to speed up their indexing of websites. Um, I'm not sure if, if, if any of you recall, but, but Back then, before caffeine was introduced, there was what was called the Google Sandbox. And so you make a change to your website, you might have to wait a month, two months, three months before Google recognized it, and then that was reflected in the search engines. After, after uh, caffeine, that was no longer the case. You 
make a change to your website, and as soon as Google crawls it again, it's immediate. Google would index it. Um, and so overall, what Caffeine did was it made indexing 50% faster, which was a benefit to everyone. And then uh, Google introduced change to its algorithm in 2011, and that was called Panda. Uh, and essentially, this was a change to try and ferret out uh, sites which were trying to spam uh, the algorithm and game the system by by having content that was not rich, that was not uh, that was not deep, that was not original. Uh, and, and so, either they, they would scrape other sites and, and have content from those sites, or they, they would simply. Uh, come up with, with all kinds of uh, content schemes to gain the system to, to drive uh, higher rankings for their own sites. So Google said, all right, everyone knows that content's important. Let's take care of this now. And so, so th that's why they introduced Pandas, an algorithm change, to eliminate uh, those sites from ranking highly. And uh, of course, along the way, in 2012, um, by then, everyone knew that linking, specifically external linking, so, so external sites pointing to your website, very, very important, critical to your SEO rankings. And so Google introduced Penguin, which was an attempt to uh, eliminate sites that were trying to, to spam the linking side. You know, they had a lot of black hat tactics for linking to gain higher rankings. Um, and so that was Penguin. Along the way, there was Knowledge Graph, also in 2012, which was a way to provide more relevancy to search engine results without needing to click further. Hummingbird came along in 2013, <coughs> uh, and what Hummingbird did was it brought the semantic, uh, it brought semantic search to the web. Um, and so, for instance, uh, you might be searching on the word cruise. But there, there are multiple meanings of the word cruise, right? Like, like it could be a cruise ship, it could be a cruise in the Caribbean, it could be a cruise missile, it could be, I don't know, Tom Cruise, right? So what, what, what Hummingbird did was it tried to be more intelligent in understanding the context of your searches. Pigeon came along in 2014, and that tried to help local businesses, so say the local auto repair shop uh, or the local restaurant, um, to, to rank more highly against, say, chains. That yes, they have a local presence, but are they truly local businesses? And so what, what Google was doing was it was taking location and distance information and factoring that into uh, search results as well. And then uh, mobile getting came along. And uh, this was when Google declared that absolutely it, it was going to prioritize sites that were mobile friendly. Uh, and Google has come out and, and explicitly said that it, it likes responsive sites. It, it prefers responsive sites. It's one set of code, um, but it can adapt, right? Whether you're on small device, smartphone, whether you're on a tablet, whether you're in a horizontal view, vertical view, um, whether you're on a desktop, whether you're on a large screen. Uh, and, and so, with mobile getting, what happened was if your site was not mobile friendly, you started not ranking as highly on smartphone searches. Uh, and uh, similarly, if your site was mobile friendly, Google would give you a little boost in the rankings, and at the time would even give you a little label in the, in the search results saying this site is mobile friendly. So as you can see, lots and lots of changes, and there are endless changes. There have been more changes this year. There are going to be more changes later this year. But the, what was the important thing to take away from all of this? What was the one, one consistent thread through absolutely every change? The customer experience, right? What's your experience searching for something, right? Are you getting the most relevant results? And is it, do you, do you want to use Google again and again and again and again to solve all of your problems? And so Google is very, very consistent in its focus on relevancy, and a fantastic experience. Um, if you're getting a result where you click through and it's not what you want, or it is a content farm, or it's some kind of spammy site, that's horrible. And Google knows that. And Google doesn't want you to experience that. And so if you know that, that, that this is true, then it makes a lot of sense to focus on customer experience. So again, we're not talking about the blocking and tackling so much 
of, oh, how do I optimize my page, right? We're talking about how do I provide a better customer experience. So here's some, some ways that you can track the, the Google algorithm and see what kinds of changes are happening uh, over time. Uh, I'd like to look at the, the top bullet point here, uh, Moz, the Google algorithm change history. Um, just very useful, and, and it's very useful for you to know what the, um, when the changes are happening and what the changes are, because then you can then look at your web analytics and say, huh, so what are the changes? What, how has this impacted us? Sometimes it might not impact you, other times it might, and then you have to decide, okay, <coughs> what do we do? How should we, uh, how should we be implementing, whether it's content or um, uh, syndication or, or anything else differently? Um, and I will be uh, tweeting out a link to the slides later, so you don't need to copy down every <laughs> URL that I'm going to show you, because I'm going to show you quite a bit. Um, and so just know that uh, you can get a copy of the, uh, of the deck uh, tonight. So, um, so again, I would just recommend you don't need to be looking at this every day. I would say you don't need to be looking at this every week or every other week. You know, just make sure at least that you're checking it monthly or every quarter at least. Okay, so before we get into a number of advanced strategies for specifically how do you drive results with SEO, uh, I do want to just spend two, three minutes covering uh, the blocking and tackling. Just so you're aware, there are endless resources online for this. this these, these topics have been covered endlessly at, at, at WordCamp and in other conferences. So that's why I feel it, it's it's not as valuable to you to go over these in detail as it is the advanced strategies where, where you're not going to find these talked about very much online. You're not going to find these uh, in, in, at many conferences. So the blocking and the tackling. Uh, we want to look at three different areas. The first area is technical. And that's everything from URL structure to having very clean code. It's very easy for Google to read. Uh, responsive, we talked about how Google is prioritizing mobile-friendly websites and prioritizing responsive websites. Um, URL canonicalization, and it's very, very, it sounds very complicated, but it's actually a very simple concept. And all that is, is if you have, let's say you, you have a URL, let's say it's for your home page, um, just have one URL for that home page. Don't have you know, myhomepage.com slash index.htm as well as myhomepage.com slash home.htm or home.php. Um, if you have dub 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 in front of your domain name, either always, always, always require it or net the default to never ever showing it. In other words, do not have different variations of your URLs. Have one variation of each URL, period, end of story. And that's URL canonicalization. So I said that there were three areas of blocking and tackling. So technical is the first, content is the next. Uh, and so that's everything from understanding, well, what should your site be talking about? What is the taxonomy that you should have in your site? Uh, and a lot of this derives from your audience. How's your audience thinking? What do they think about? How do they articulate those thoughts? And you can uncover that through understanding which keywords and keyword phrases are being searched on the most in your area. Um, so other things to look at with content SEO would be you know, how are you writing about it on the page? Uh, how are you writing about it off the page? Uh, you know, do you have H1 and H2 tags that uh, have keywords uh, or are keyword centric? Um, title tags that are keyword centric. Uh, think about the title tags. Um, you know, you want to make sure that, that your keyword is as far to the left in your title tag as possible. Why? Because then Google will understand, ah, oh, okay, this is important to this page. Okay, the more that, that you're making it clear and simple to Google what you care about and how this page is relevant to the user, it makes it, makes it easier for Google's algorithm to understand where you're relevant, where you're an authority, and how to rank. So again, this stuff has been covered endlessly online, in other conferences, at other word camps. Um, and so I think it's, it's very easy to, uh, to uncover this information. <clears throat> Credibility is the third pillar here when we're talking about blocking and tackling for SEO. 
And to prove credibility, we're really talking about links, right? Bottom line, we're talking about links. So, and we're talking about external links. I've heard people <laughs> mistakenly say that, that linking out to other sites is going to help your, your search results. Well, you know, there is, there is an argument to be made that, yeah, a link here and there to high quality sources like, say, CNN uh, or NPR uh, is, is, uh, is indicating to Google that the, the, the level that, that you're at. You know, you're, you're not linking out to joeschmo.com or maryschmo.com, right? Uh, so there is an argument for that, but that's the tail wagging the dog. The dog here is external links pointing to you, and that's what's going to drive your search results. So you want to make sure that there's a reason why people should be dying to link to you. It's not a case where you can go out and ask people to link to you. Don't do that. Just don't do it. Think about that. The, the, the sites that are most popular are the ones that are just, they're fantastic, they're awesome, they provide the most value. So how can you provide the most value, right? How can your content be the best? How can it offer the most value? And then sure, you can communicate with influencers, but always try to add value to them. When you're communicating, see how you can help them instead of, can I have a link? Hey, check this out, maybe you want to link to it. Don't do that, help them. The more you help others, it will come around, I guarantee it. It will come around and help you. But it's all about being helpful, being the most valuable, being the most trusted advisor in your niche. And that's what's going to drive links. It's not about going out and asking for links. Um, is there a PR component to it? Is there a content amplification component to it? Absolutely. You want to get the word out there. And there are lots of creative ways to do it, right? It doesn't have to be so explicit as asking for links. Uh, you can hold events, you can uh, hold giveaways, uh, you can hold uh, cocktail hours, you can uh, provide content for free. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ways that, um, that you can be getting the word out there and reinforcing your reputation as the most valuable resource online, as the most trusted advisor in your specific niche. And again, Word will spread. All right, so those were three pillars of blocking and tackling. Now, now for the good stuff. So this is this is the power SEO. This is where you're going to double your SEO results. This is where you're going to triple your SEO results. This is where you're going to 10x your SEO results. So Google came out with Rank Brain last year. Now this is it's artificial intelligence engine that's influencing search results today. They announced it last year, and uh, at the time that they announced it, it was already it was already the third most influential search ranking factor. Think about that. Artificial intelligence by Google, already the third most influential ranking factor. Who would have thought it, right? No one knew. Came out of nowhere. But what you need to understand is, this is the direction Google's going in. Google is 100% headfirst into artificial intelligence. The CEO at Google has stated publicly that they are looking to embed artificial intelligence in absolutely every product they roll out. Every product. They've already, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, that they spent half a billion dollars on an artificial intelligence company. Um, this is the direction of search. And so you have to ask, well, if, if Google is going in this direction, what are the implications? Well, you know, how is this going to affect what I do for my site or my client's sites? So here's one very, very important thing to understand about the implications of an AI-powered search world. So we're going to be moving from a pre-click search universe to a post-click search universe. What do I mean by that? Well, through artificial intelligence, Google is going to be able to understand what happens after someone clicks on a search result at a deeper and deeper level. Remember I was talking about how the one common theme through all of those changes that we looked at with Google through the years, right? Everything from Caffeine to Panda to Penguin, on and on. Right? The one consistency throughout all of that was customer experience. Well, guess what? AI is a direct link to customer experience because what AI is doing is saying, okay, you search for, uh, I don't know, laptops online, right? You click on a link, which Google thinks
science is relevant, then it's looking at, did you find the journey relevant? What did you do after you clicked? Did you purchase something? Did you click around on that website? Did you engage with that website? What happened? Or did you just go to that website, eh, it wasn't so good, you bounced back to the search engine. And so Google is going to be looking at the post-click more and more and more. So what does that mean for your search efforts? Customer experience, right? You need to nail it. You need to know what you're targeting. Don't try to lure people to your site because it's a long tail keyword or you think there's a lot of, there's a lot of search traffic for a specific keyword. Make sure you're providing a fantastic customer experience for your target keyword phrases for the topics that you want to be an authority on. Be the best in customer experience. We talked about strategy. Strategy is, it is by far and away the number one method for you to get fantastic search results. Whether we're talking five years ago, whether we're, we're, we're talking five years from now. Um, you know, give you an example, Sears came to us years ago and uh, they said, hey, you know, why don't we talk about uh, SEO for our website? And, you know, yes, we could have looked at their title tags and said, well, you know, you've got to tweak your title tags a little bit, or we could have looked at their URL structure, we could have looked at their URL canonicalization like we were talking about. So, well, you've got to fix that canonicalization. Right, we could have talked about all the, the blocking and tackling. The truth of the matter is, who cares? Who cares? Why do I say that? Because we spent days and days on a customer journey through searching for things that, that, that Sears sells, whether it's appliances, right, refrigerators, washing machines, whether it's clothing, apparel, uh, whether it's, uh, it's uh, home and outdoor. And what we found was that their website was way too complicated. It was, it, it was impossible to navigate through the website. And so we, we showed them one page, we marked it up. There were 27 navigational uh, systems on one page. I'm not, I'm not saying 27 navigational options or 27 nav navigational buttons. 27 navigational systems. It was horrible. It, it was unusable. And we pointed this out to them and they were cringing while we were showing them. The problem is that sometimes we get so into our business and we're so heads down and we're taking care of what? We're taking care of what has to get done today. What has to get done today? Oh, I have to optimize my site. I have to optimize my title tags. Oh, do I have enough keywords on the page? Oh, have I figured out what keywords I'm targeting? And we get so deep into this little silo of SEO, or at Sears, they were so into everyone's little fiefdom, right? Everyone had their own little territory. They were focused on that. There was nothing that was tying it together. And so we taught them, no, no, no. You have to start by tying it all together. You have to have a website where people can navigate through, where it's a good experience with the point things after they arrive on your site. Otherwise, it's going to be, this is going to be an unmitigated disaster. And so again, it comes down to strategy. What's your strategy? Don't just go in and start optimizing this and optimizing that. Have a marketing strategy first. When we're talking about strategies, we can break it down. Not just marketing strategies overall. How about content strategies specifically? So, Next shampoo came to us years ago, and they said, okay, can, can you uh, help us optimize? You know, we, we have pretty bad at SEO results. And uh, we looked at their marketing, and we said, well, you know, here, here's the problem. Um, you know, yes, we could optimize your website, but again, you know, we think that your marketing strategy is broken because no one cares. Your marketing strategy is focused on telling people the amazing ingredients in your shampoo. Right? And they do have amazing ingredients. I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. They have amazing ingredients in their shampoo. That's why it costs $15 a bottle. It's very expensive. It's awesome shampoo. But that's not the issue here. What we're trying to do is connect with people and tell them about how awesome the shampoo is, right? Well, how do you connect with them? Well, you have to understand what they care about, what they talk about, how they're thinking, how they're searching, right? Because how they're searching is how they're thinking. It's a direct translation of how they're thinking. So what were people thinking about? Were they thinking about ingredients of shampoo? Is that what they were searching on? No, there were zero searches for ingredients of shampoo. Zero. We went through their full list. Zero. So of course your search results suck. But you know what? Of course your marketing strategy sucks too. You're talking, you're, you have TV ads, you're spending tons of money on this. No one cares, right? So what, what did they care about? They cared about hairstyles. Right? Hairstyles. Because that's very applicable to them. That's something that they do. That's something that they actively search on. Because that's what they think about. What, what hairstyles should I have this weekend? Oh, I have a big date. How should I change?
changed my hairstyle. Oh, I was my first day on the job. What hairstyle? People are constantly thinking about their hairstyles, right? Massive, massive search volumes around hairstyles. At the time, there was not one competitor that was targeting hairstyles. Not one shampoo competitor. Not one. So what did Nexus do? They changed their marketing strategy, right? We didn't start just optimizing their site. We changed the marketing strategy. And the whole entire strategy, including their TV ads, including their magazine ads, including everything about the brand, was about we are going to help you have the most amazing hairstyles in the world. So what did they do? They brought in these, these New York stylists and LA stylists and made all these different videos of different hairstyles that you can do. The YouTube channel went off the charts. They increased their search traffic to the site by over 2,200% in a single year. Now, if we had just done blocking and tackling, do you really think we would have gotten any more search traffic? No. We, and we could have done a great job on that, right? We could have done a great job optimizing their site. Fantastic job optimizing their site. It wouldn't have gotten any more traffic. It wouldn't have gotten them any more customers. They had to change their marketing strategy, right? So just understand, you have to be heading in the right direction. You have to be connecting with people. You have to be providing them with an awesome customer experience, the experience that they crave. And then you optimize everything you're doing. You tie it all together. You integrate. And it's very powerful. And that's how you 10x your results. So we're talking about content strategies here, right? So instead of focusing on ingredients, focus on hairstyles. Well, when you're working through your content strategies, whether it's for your own site or whether it's for uh, your clients, what I'm going to ask you to do is go through five stages, okay? And do what Upworthy does. Upworthy is a, is a publishing uh, company, fastest growing publishing site uh, in the world, I believe. Uh, they now have 30 million monthly uniques. Um, and what they do is they go through 25, 25 different options for every headline, for every content piece. 25 headlines to figure out which one is the best, right? And sure, they test, but they, they must go through 25 before they start testing. And it's this process of preparing and then incubation, and then perspiration, and then revelation, and then finally you get to the aha moment. Like, oh, that's it, right? It doesn't happen when you just come up with the first headline. And so when you're talking about content, I want you to think headlines, headlines, headlines. Why? Because headlines is what drives, is what drives clicks. If, if people are not intrigued by your headline, they will not click. They're not gonna even see your content. And so you need Headlines be very, very powerful and very compelling. Um, only 20% are going to typically click through on a headline. Make sure you flip that around. Make sure it's 80%. So what's a way that you can do this in WordPress? Well, uh, there's there's um, a plugin. Uh, it's called King Sumo Headlines, and the, the URL is here. Again, I'm going to tweet out the deck for you later, so you'll have uh, access to this. Um, it makes it super, super easy for you to go through this process. So I want you to brainstorm 25 headlines, right, for every content piece. Maybe pick the top three, the top four, the top five, depending on how much traffic you get, right? You might have to pick only the top two if you have a low traffic website, right, just to have sufficiently uh, um, statistically valid data, right? But this makes it very, very easy for you in WordPress to test headline A versus headline B versus headline C versus headline D and E. Very, very easy. And you can set it so that once a winner is very apparent, you drop the others. You stop serving up the others. And you only optimize for the one that's killing it, the one that's getting the best results. Well, it's another content strategy. Um, so with our own website, we came out with a post uh, two years ago called the ROI of uh, UX, user experience. And uh, at the time, it, it got over 2,500 uh, shares on social media. I mean, since then, Twitter has attracted its uh, search stats. Um, and so it's showing only 1.2K here, but at the time, it was over 2,500. And um, we said, wow, okay, well, you know, this is driving a, a lot of shares, it's driving the majority, uh, you know, this was the, the highest uh, um, page view uh, post in our site, uh, and it was also driving the most SEO traffic to our site. 
And so he said, so how can we leverage this? So what we looked for was themes, right? So we said, okay, we think the theme here is the ROI of. And so we started testing that out. We started testing out the ROI of branding, the ROI of SEO, the ROI of this, the ROI of that. And sure enough, that was a fantastic formula to drive search traffic, to drive shares, to drive page views. And so once you, once you develop a piece that does well, you have to analyze it and figure out how you can leverage it, right? So instead of just having this nice thing, right, you're going to 10x it. So no longer can we just look at SEO in a silo. You absolutely must think of it as, okay, we're looking at SEO content, social media, and PR. It's pretty much all the same thing now because they all tie together and reinforce each other's results. Um, and so years ago, we helped a company out, very small company. Uh, they only about, had about five people in it. Um, but they had a contest uh, for mom entrepreneurs, so mothers who had started their own businesses. And what we did was we focused equally, equally hard on PR as we did on social media, as we did on SEO, equally hard. And sure enough, everything absolutely reinforced everything else. Um, you know, yes, we were able to get uh, a full page in businessinsider.com, you know, tens of millions of page views a month, right? That was fantastic from a PR perspective. But that also helped drive uh, word of mouth. That drove search. Um, that drove social. It, it all tied together, resulting in 249,000 page views in, in a less than three month period for this contest. Another thing that you want to be doing as an advanced SEO tactic, because I'll tell you, I see this all the time. You can create content, and you can create tons and tons of content, and it might be technically accurate. It might be 100% accurate, but if it's boring, it's probably going to fail with SEO. You look at Intel, they're the most technical company you can imagine. They can be boring you to death if they just spoke about their technology. But instead, what do they do? They always come up with creative ways to talk about their technology. Listen to the color of pizza. Cool, right? Interesting. So here's a blog post that's interesting. Why James Chartrand wears women's underpants? Huh. Made, made me want to read it. Turns out that James was actually a woman, and she was using a pseudonym. Blendtec. They sell blenders in your kitchen, right? Blenders. Can you imagine being the, the VP of marketing there and being responsible for trying to market a blender? Oh, God. Be horrible, right? Be horrible. What do you say? Because, yes, they had the best technology. But who cares? Who talks about blender technology? Who cares about blender technology? So instead, they focused on blending crazy things. They started with marbles, right? That got, what, about 7 million page views in a YouTube video. And then they started uh, blending uh, iPhones and iPads and uh, you know, rake sticks and, and all sorts of crazy, crazy stuff. When they pump out a new Will It Blend video, minimum, minimum, they get 100,000 views on each video. Some of their videos get 18 million views. You can't buy that type of advertising. You can't buy that type of exposure. But what does this do? Everyone talks about it. Everyone is linking to it. What do links do? It, links are the number one factor in driving your SEO results. And so again, all ties together. The theme here is you can't be boring. Even if you're technically accurate, don't be boring. Make it hugely, hugely interesting, which is going to compel social media. It's going to uh, it's going to drive an SEO results. It's going to drive integrated results. Another strategy uh, for advanced SEO: make it visual. Why? The human brain processes visual 60,000 times faster than text. So we're not saying 600 times faster. We're not saying 6,000 times faster. We're saying 60,000 times faster. That's amazing. And what it means is we should capitalize on that. Uh, make your content, no matter how technically accurate it is, no matter how interesting it is, make it very visual. Visual content is 40 times more likely to be shared. Also, remember what I said about mobile and Google, uh, Google's mobile game, uh, where it started prioritizing mobile-friendly websites and uh, pushing down sites that were not mobile-friendly. Um, 
Google has updated uh, its algorithm again uh, this year, in May, came out with another mobile-friendly <coughs> update. This is going to be a continuing trend. There are repeated mobile updates. You should expect more in the future. So again, get ahead of the curve. When you're coming up with content strategies, when you're coming up with marketing strategies, necessarily have those mobile discussions. How are you going to make this the most engaging, most compelling mobile experience you can? So we've talked a lot about strategy, right? We talked about marketing strategy, we talked about content strategy, we talked about uh, ways of, of driving more interest, uh, ways of driving more search results. There are also lots of tools that you could be using as well to help you. If you go into uh, WordPress's uh, plugin repository, it's directory, over a thousand SEO plugins to help you. Um, I would say, you know, probably for most of you, Yoast is going to be a fantastic option to look at. Um, and uh, just given the time, I'm, I'm going to click through these slides. And again, I'll provide you with the slides later today, so you'll be able to download all of these links and see all of the, uh, the, the specific examples. Um, I, I would definitely say uh, check out Yoast. It's fantastic for helping you with a lot of blogging. It also now has a little analysis tool if you plug in the keyword that you're targeting. Um, and you know, use it as a guide. Use it directionally. Google has a, a lot of different uh, tools that provide you with very key information. Google Search Console. Every website that you have should have a Google Search Console account give you very key underlying data as to how Google is uh, reading the site and whether it's encountering any problems that you can then address. Google Analytics. I mean, we could talk for 10 hours about all the different ways that you can use Google Analytics to help your SEO results. Uh, Google Keyword Planner. Uh, Google Analytics Intelligent uh, Alerts. Fantastic. How many of you are using Intelligent Alerts today? <laughs> So, tomorrow, your task is <laughs> start, start signing up for, for intelligent alerts. And what it will do is you can set up triggers. So, if your SEO traffic drops by 10%, or if it drops by 20%, get an alert. If it spikes by 10%, 20%, 30%, get an alert. Your overall traffic, your page views, uh, traffic from mobile, uh, traffic from smartphone, you, you can customize it to alert you to whatever you need. Due to the time, um, we won't be able to go through all of the tools that we have here, but again, I'll upload uh, the deck for you. There are many, many other tools, whether they're technical, uh, whether they're, they're looking at site speed, whether they're looking at mobile, whether they're looking at content, um, and uh, I think that uh, they'll be very, very helpful to you. At this time, do you, do you have any questions? Yes. So when you say tweet, uh, is this your Twitter account or WC? Boston for the access to the deck? Uh, it's mine. Okay. So, Can you? <laughs> yeah, it up for you. That we need. <laughs> so it's twitter.com slash Tom Shapiro. Any other questions?